Hello, welcome back. So this section is going to be a bit of a capstone. Maybe that's an exaggeration. It's going to be uh, a summary of what we've been focusing on in the last couple of sections. So there's sort of this subsection of the course, the last three or four sections that we're all focused on working with multiple tables, relationships between data, uh, tables where we have foreign keys referencing other tables, talking about uh, relationships or associations like a one-to-many relationship or a many-to-many -many relationship and so on. And then also joins, which is what we are focusing on as of late. So this is going to kind of wrap that all together into something bigger because so far we've really been working with two, maybe three tables modeling a single relationship like customers and orders. But now we're going to take something on a little bit bigger. We're going to focus on a bit of a case study. We're going to work with a site that you're probably familiar with, Instagram, and we're going to try and clone the database for some of the basic functionality. So we're not going to be diving into like advertising and keeping track of our users' data and all of that. We're really focusing on the main big entities to a site like Instagram, things like photos and comments and users and so on. So again, we're not really scratching the surface as to how Instagram actually stores everything. We'll talk about what things work best for scaling. Um, we'll run into some fun issues when we talk about how hashtags work and how you should store hashtags. So we will talk a little bit about performance, but this is really more about how do you design a schema for something that has, in our example, at least seven or eight tables. In Instagram, the real app, I, there's probably dozens of tables. But either way, it's a big step up from two tables or three tables max. And then the other thing I want to mention is that in this section, we're going to focus on designing the schema. It's going to be a bit of an exercise, but I'm also going to go through and do it myself. But then in the next section, I'm actually going to give you a bunch of data, like a ton of data. I spent a long time making this here. So this is what we'll be working with. You'll actually be inserting this so that for once we'll be able to work with big amounts of data, thousands of rows, and you'll see the impact that it has. Uh, and also hopefully it will feel a bit more realistic rather than you know two or three things at a time. So that's where we're going. But in this section, we gotta create the schema first. We gotta understand what we need. So let's start by taking a look at a typical Instagram page. And yeah, some of you may know this. Um, I'm in my spare time, I like to do photography especially landscape photography, stuff around San Francisco. So I am using my own Instagram here, but that's not really why. I'm not trying to get more exposure or anything. Uh, it's just that I don't want to run into any issues with you know, permission or, using, or having rights to use somebody's images in my course. Okay, so with that said, the reason this is here, like I said, is not just to show you my photo, uh, but mainly it's to help us understand and identify the key entities. So on this basic Instagram, this is from the web app, um, though most people use the iOS or Android app, it's the same entities, the same data. And the first thing, probably the most obvious, is users. So we're going to need some sort of users table or a way to store users. And then moving on. We've got a really obvious one, which are the photos. We need a way of storing images or photos. Now, I, we're not going to like worry about how we actually upload photos and how you know what data type we use to store them or anything like that. We'll just say that it's an image URL. So when we actually get to the exercise portion, I'll, I'll come back to that. So we need to store stuff about photos. And then we've got things like likes. So we need to store likes for a given photo, but also remember there are some complications because you know I can't just click on this heart button, uh, you know, ten times and add ten likes. I can only like it once. So we need to have something there as well. Maybe there's something we can do with our database. Hint. And then we've got hashtags, and hashtags are a fun one. Um, we're going to save that for last in this section because there's a lot of ways of, of doing them. Um, we'll talk about at least three. And there's a couple of advantages and disadvantages to each. So hashtags, though, are an important part of Instagram and of a lot of you know, tagging in general is a lot of web apps, whether it's blogging uh, or Twitter or something like Instagram. And then we also have other components that I couldn't fit onto one page, like comments here. That's really the big thing that we also need to be able to store, comment information. Uh, and then there's one other big thing, which is followers and following. So the relationships between users, how do we store that? You know, there's a couple ways of doing that as well. 
but on Instagram, the way that it works and the way that our database should work is that it's a one-way relationship. It's not like Facebook where, you know, I send a request to someone and we only become friends if they accept or vice versa, but both of us have to be kind of consenting friends. On Instagram, I can follow somebody and they don't have to follow me back or people can follow me and I don't have to follow them back. So how do we store that in a database? Okay, so that's really what we're focusing on. There are obviously other things, like we're not gonna store profile information. We're not going to store stuff about advertising, like I said, um, and that, that's just scratching the surface of what we're not storing. There's a bunch more. But we are going to store information, and I'm not saying these are the tables we need. We may need more tables. We may be able to get away with fewer tables, but these are the entities, the information we need to store. So users, photos, comments, on photos, likes for photos as well, hashtags, which will apply to photos. We're not gonna worry about hashtags inside of comments, which you can do on the real Instagram. We're not gonna do that. We can talk about how, but it just makes it a lot messier. And then also followers slash followees. It's kind of difficult to talk about the, the different roles there, but just relationships or uh, friendships or whatever you want to call it. I, I just call it followers and followees or followings. So these are the main things we need to store. And the way that I'd like to structure this is I would like you to try and give this a shot. So you don't have to actually you know, insert data and do a bunch of exercises on your own, but I'd like for you to at least brainstorm how you would do this. What are the tables you need? I'm going to, you know, in the next, in the ensuing six or seven videos, go through each table we need and talk about my solution, but it would be great if you would take the time to just kind of think about it, jot it down, either draw diagrams out, create a schema file, and just write the create table statements, whatever you feel most comfortable with. If you want to get a whiteboard or post-it notes, whatever works, but think about how you would do this. If you were creating, it doesn't matter if you're a developer, if you know how to code in other languages or not, but if you were creating an application like Instagram with the functionality we described, what would you sit down and start with for your database and how would you brainstorm? it? So that's really what I'd like you to do. And then in the next couple of videos, I'll step through in bite-sized chunks. I wanna make sure that these are short videos, um, which I know I have said before and maybe have not held up my end of the bargain all the time, but these will be shorter and they'll go through my thought process and how I created it. Oh, and before I forget, if you're going to attempt this, when you're creating the tables that you need to store this type of information, just focus on the core essentials. So for something like users, you don't have to be, you know, have a username and an email and a password and I don't know what, what else Instagram asks for, like a, a birthday maybe and a profile and all of that. You don't need that. Just the basics, maybe like username and whatever else you need to have it work or have it um, relate or associate with all the other entities. It's, much, it's easy to you know, add the individual things to a table, like for users, adding an email column is not hard, but then figuring out how you have users connected to likes, for instance, that's what I'd like you to focus on. Okay, so again, you don't need all the information you can possibly think of, just the key parts.